Conversation with our folks from the Blairsville Salzburg School District brought to you by Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. I know we have Acting Superintendent uh, Phil Martell with us, and uh, Mike Lazier exp- expected to join us momentarily. Uh, Mr. Martell, good to see you and or talk to you again. Uh, thank you for having us. Really appreciate it. It's a good. It's a pleasure to do that. So we are getting close to the start of school at Blairsville Salzburg. We've been talking with you through this whole process of the summer with uh, Mr. Souls, and now with you. And uh, well, what's it looking like uh, for the start of school? Are we on schedule? And is everything buttoned up yet? Well, we are on schedule. Uh, we are starting. You know, as we discussed before, in the, in the hybrid model based on you know the moderate rating here in the county. Um, you know, we're finishing up some, some loose ends. This is a big transition, not just for this school district, really, but for any school district. And, and it's presented its challenges, um, but it'll, be, it'll also present a lot of teachable moments as we, you know, as we move forward in the future. So we are, uh, we're deploying our devices, the remaining devices today. We were very fortunate enough uh, to find devices where many school districts right now cannot even get them. So we will be a fully one-to-one district uh, K through 12. So um, those are presenting some logistical challenges, you can imagine. You know, when you try to roll out 500 de- devices and you know meet parents and different things and set up accounts. So we're 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 really you know we're deep in it, though. I know it's super busy time uh, at at this time of the year anyway for school superintendents, school administrators, teachers. Everybody is is hyper busy at this time. Now these extra challenges, and there have been just almost daily meetings of the superintendents and the administrators at school districts all across Indiana County. Have you had a chance to visit with any of those who have already started school to find out what issues they've come up against? Yeah, I've had some, we've had some discussions because obviously everybody's doing something a little bit different. Um, You know, but they they seem like, you know, know, implementing the plans that they put in place um, have worked well. Um, Obviously, you know, things can change dramatically if we have an, you know, we have an influx of cases or different things. Um, but you know, it's just it's it's a day by day day thing. Uh, you know, even yesterday again, guidelines changing on sports. Uh, it's just it's it's be, it's become insurmountable on a lot of fronts, to be honest with you, because we're expecting so much from our staff and our students and our parents. So, um, but we're getting through it, and um, you know, it, it does have its challenges. Mr. Lazer is now here with us too. So there you go. Let you know. Mike, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? Wonderful. We're going to talk with you a lot during football season, but uh, I guess this is as good a t- time as any uh, to tell everybody about uh, the uh, agreement that we have with the Blairsville Salzburg School District uh, to video stream your football games. We're looking forward to that and the broad coverage that that will uh, entail. Uh, but you as a football coach, one thing, and, and we'll certainly spend a lot of time talking that out of football this year, but uh, you have a new role this year within this, the school district as an administrator, don't you? Yeah, definitely. Um, I've been over at Blairsville here since uh, the beginning of August, and uh, it, it's been um, challenging just with the, the pandemic that we're facing, but uh, it's been a great opportunity. The teachers, the staff, uh, Mr. Martell have all been great um, and accommodating with, you know, with the coaching part of it as well. Um, so it's a challenging time, but we will do what we need to do for students and get through this. When students get back in the classroom next week, uh, they're obviously going to be seeing things uh, they haven't seen before. Uh, the school is going to look different. Uh, there will be all kinds of new procedures. Uh, what are some of the things that they will encounter that are just might take them aback for a moment or two before they get used to it? Yeah, uh, the kids will be coming back September 8th. And, you know, we're looking forward to that. There will be some different things, uh, you know, for the, the students when they come in. You know, they're going to see one-way signs on the floor for one thing. That's going to be different. Um, you know, everybody's going to have to be masked up. Um, so it, there's going to be some challenges, the social distance part. Um, but one good thing, we've had kids, you know, around with some summer activities, uh, summer programs. So these kids have been doing that, but, um, you know, it's just it's going to be great to get the kids back, just get them back to a little bit of normalcy, which we're all looking for here with our with our kids. Yeah, that's that's really going to be something. Are there procedures set up for monitoring in the hallways for when kids, you know, kids are typically going to gather together between classes and uh, get a little grouping and a little joshing around and everything and um, just can't do those sorts of things anymore. What sort of things uh, will be happening in the hallways to make sure kids are staying physically distanced? Uh, teachers, you know, will be monitoring the hallways, uh, which they normally do, but, you know, they'll have to, 
really encourage that social distance um, piece, and you know they'll, they'll do a good job of that. We we have a good staff here, and you know both on the Salzburg end, so um, they, you know that's something different for them. But um, you know they're aware of what's ahead as well. Yeah, and and Philip Martell, you can weigh in on this as well. One of the things that people get concerned about is you hear so many different things about. Um, uh, contacting surfaces, um, and uh, there are going to be kids that come in and use a desk that was used in a previous class. Well, that's typically the way that it has always worked. Uh, one class moves out, another class moves in. They're using the same uh, materials, the same uh, desks, the, the same pencil sharpeners, all those different things. How do we alleviate uh, any concerns there? You know, I have to give credit uh, to our staff, to our teachers, because they're you know they were willing to take on that additional role to help clean in between periods. So we are actually providing them as a district all the PPE tools that they need, um, you know, to make sure that happens. So I, I, I can't thank them enough, Mrs. Muran, you know, in the, in the union and our whole staff for, will, you know, will, they're willing to do that. So that, that really, that helps that issue in between. And then obviously we have all of our deep clean procedures and we, are, we have readjusted some of our custodial hours to meet those needs when we do have our students in and even around some of the possible activities in the future. Yeah. In terms of um, the class for, for online students, uh, whether they're taking all online or um, they're, they're part of the hybrid model, um, those students who are going to be at home one day and in the, cl- in the building the next day, um, how seamless is that going to be for them to make that transition? You know, I think it, it's going to, pre- I'm not going to, you know, and this is me, I've always been straight. I think it's going to present some challenges at the beginning. I know it will be better than what, you know, what, obviously the district did the best job they could, like all the districts in the spring when they were, you know, left on a Friday and told to do this. We've made, uh, we've listened to our parents. We've tried to structure that, the tra- you know, that transition hopefully be as, uh, in, you know, seamless as possible. But we have created more time with our teachers as far as contact with our students. So when those students are out of the buildings on those days, uh, we will have teachers, they will be able to contact their teachers um, during those days that they are at home. Um, you know, but it's, it's, you know, you have a lot of districts that are going, you know, with a synchronous type model where they're just going fully live streaming for eight hours a day. Uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of both because, honestly, if you think about it, when you talk about some of our younger students, they're not going to sit on a computer for eight hours a day. Yeah. Um, so let's be realistic about it because they need some of that, you know, because that, that, they have to develop some of those social skills and different things. Um, so really, it's truly a blended model, too, and, and, you know, but we're meeting all the state standards and guidelines. We had a report we were reading earlier this morning on the air about the expenses for parents uh, in terms of uh, child care for when they're home one day and, and back at work the next day, the amount of food uh, that is going to be available and how their grocery bills are going up. Uh, talk about, um, if you would, um, lunchtime. Uh, at the Blairsville Salzburg schools, uh, and and how that is handled, and uh, and of course, um, are students at home going to be assured of getting proper nutrition as well? Or is that uh, completely up to the parents? Um, with that, you know, the the lunches at home, we are going to offer a uh, a program, you know, where kind of like what we did with the summer, where you know we would offer food, um, you know, for multiple days for families. We're going to do something similar to that, um, and information will be coming up. Uh, regarding that for those families to get them, you know, food. Um, the cafeteria, you know, you, you mentioned that. That's going to be a, another major change for, uh, you know, the students. We got, you know, close to 100 desks in our cafeteria. Um, so we, we're going to be in there, you know, socially distanced. And, you know, one thing, we're going to try to get the kids outside as much as possible. Um, mm-hmm. You know, that's in the classroom and at lunchtime. When we can do it, we will get them outside. But, you know, getting back to the parents, it is a challenge for the parents. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, it's definitely going to pose a challenge for the parents, and we're aware of that, and we're going to try to work with them as, as much as possible. And, you know, Todd, the, really what the difference is from a funding perspective since the spring, you know, Act 13 was put in place by the legislature, which really allowed for us to feed all of our students, to do a lot of creative things, to be able to get reimbursement. You know, that, that expired, I will tell you, at the end of June, so... There's even now a bigger burden on school districts from a financial perspective because, you know, within like those feeding guidelines, we are, you know, we're we're making those meals made available based on those free and reduced lunch rate, you know, students 
so it doesn't touch every student. Um, that was one of the things we've, we really want our, you know, legislators and, and, you know, I think you've seen some discussion with the governor saying the federal government needed to do it. We really need something similar, another Act 13, to be able to help schools financially. Yeah, I can understand that. I would not want to be a school district business manager right now. Uh, trying to look at those books and make any sort of sense out of them. It just must be uh, really, really daunting. From the town hall meeting last week, um, uh, that went pretty well, I thought, online, the way that that you folks handled it. Um, any big issues that came up in that that you um, want to make clor- uh, clear to folks or maybe they, they might need a reminder on? One big issue I can think of, and I'll turn it over to Mr. Leisure. Um, you know, next week, obviously, with a holiday week, you know, we had to change the schedule a little bit. So the students that were tr- traditionally in that A to L going to go on Monday to Tuesday, they will go on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then the Thursday, Friday students will do- be doing that as well. Um, but we will also, I would just ask parents to keep continue. We are, you know, uh, changing our website dramatically. We're putting more information out. We're going to be doing enough, a number of all-call contacts with parents as things change and trying to provide them with the information um, you know, because like at the end of the week for our students, before they do come back in, we want to be able to have them obviously get online and, and in a comfort session. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, very good. Gentlemen, uh, we're just about out of time here this morning. Now, this is uh, the first of our school visits officially for the year. We do the Blairsville uh, and Salzburg schools. Is there going to be somebody available from Salzburg next week that can talk with us? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, we sure can. Mrs. Richards will be available whenever you need her. No problem. Terrific, terrific. I think we've got them scheduled for, let me look here. I'll figure it out. I'll do an email to to Mrs. Santora. We'll get it all fixed up. All right, great. We appreciate your time here this morning. It's uh, been very, very educational for me, uh, and you guys are in the education business. So thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160 and AM 1160.